Hi everyone, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd and today, well, I'm at Eiffel Eupol and we're actually inside at the moment because I wanted to show you uh, some of the things that they actually carry here. Like obviously, you know, this car is not a big selection at the moment, but there is still some. And then also something else that I spotted too that I wanted to show is right over here. You have a couple of uh, square body hoods actually and this one they say is brand new, which I mean, looking at it. Yeah, I think this may have been just like a new hood that somebody bought and never really installed and just sat in their garage. It's actually in really nice shape and it's only a hundred bucks. That's a really, really good deal on that. And then they have this other one here that's a little more tatty, but still in really good shape overall for only $80. And you know that these square body hoods are such a hot commodity because, well, they were designed very poorly and they bend all the time. You know, right at this joint here, they like to just taco themselves. So. Yeah, a couple of hoods for 81 plus square bodies. And so looking even through their vehicles for sale, like there's a couple of these that are kind of interesting, honestly. Um, like something here, Saturn Astra, which these, I actually kind of enjoy these. Oh, this one's a little bit beat up, but I mean, they all come to the junkyard typically for some reason. Sometimes though, they just want to get rid of a vehicle and you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And so then they just get sold like this, but depending. This one is actually, uh, I like the shape of these. They're actually, remember correctly, these are an Opal, like straight up just an Opal, just badges of Saturn and made for the North American market, but they're pretty cool. And then something you don't see very often either, Chevy Corsica, which it's already pending. They, they only got this in just like a couple days ago. Um, and then for 2,100 bucks, it's not really a bad deal, you know? And the thing is like, it's not that rusty. These weren't the best car in the world, but you just don't really see them very much anymore. And they only made these for nine years. This is, a, uh, I believe, the second to last year of these. And it's just really, really neat to see one out and about because, like I said, these, the 3.1s in these typically were not the best, but, you know, not too bad. It's cool. Okay, so I don't know if you remember the last junk air tour I did here but this car had a roof on it <laughs> it no longer has a roof on it so yeah that's pretty funny and i think the trunk was here too if i remember correctly so this is definitely a lot more stripped than last time passenger windows out that's the rear glass you know and that might be worth money to somebody but hard to say for sure you know and actually that's the stuff that i pulled out of this door here you know and the hood's no longer here so, and the grill is gone. So yeah, th th this one is not much left of it, but it is neat to see that people are actually grabbing parts off this, thankfully, because it's such a cool car. Cause this is a uh, Toyota Corona, um, which they didn't build for like terribly long. Like it's, it says it's a 74 and you know, it's just pretty neat. So I'm glad that people took parts off of it. Cause it's, it's a really rusty car to be honest. So yeah. So here we go, here we have an 80s uh, Toyota pickup truck. You know, it's one of their uh, mid-sized ones. And they didn't really have a proper name to these. Like in other parts of the world, they were called the Hilux, but, and actually the seats, other than a little tear here, are actually not in bad shape. Uh, and they look actually pretty comfortable too. So, you know, those might be worth something for, to somebody, you know, if they want to come in here. And this one had a big front end collision. It's most likely got the 22R under the hood, which, yeah, that's definitely what that is. A little four banger. Uh, very stout motors. They'll go forever. And these trucks are amazing. Now, if this was the diesel, huh, it'd be a real big shame that it's in here. But these also had issues with the frames rusting. And this one's actually not too bad, surprisingly. But... Um, I believe there was a recall for it as well. And even like the drum brakes, you know, if you need any of that stuff, that's all here. So you never know. Sometimes you just need to save a buck. Now, this is a uh, Nissan Pathfinder, I believe. Two door, or actually no, it is a four door. But man, this thing is a unit. And this would be in the V6. I do wonder, is this a 3.5 under the hood? Which would be the VQ35. Uh, it happens to be a manual as well, you know, and of course, four by four, man, this is actually kind of a rarity. Cause let's see, is that the VQ 35? Um, or is this a three liter, which I love this, uh, bull bar in the front of this thing. That thing is just awesome. 
I'd almost want to take that and put it on my my dad's truck. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a three liter V6. Okay, so this is actually a similar engine. I don't believe it's the same engine that was put in the 300ZX. Um, I don't know much about them, but it's still pretty neat. And this thing was quite the unit back in the day, but now it's a dilapidated corpse in the junkyard. Now, this is not an unusual sight to find a Land Rover that's dilapidated in a junkyard, but this is the first one that I've actually, actually seen in this junkyard. So this is the, I think, Land Rover LR2. This would have been like mid 90s, I think. And, you know, uh, the new Ford uh, Bronco Sports kind of look like, a, oh, it's actually a Discovery, not an LR2. So, uh, yeah, because actually the, the roof line, though, sorry, that it is a disco. And they say it's a 96, so there you go. It's pretty neat, though. And these were a very capable off-roader and everything when they, you know, were running. But, because Land Rover's not known for their reliability, but they are decently comfortable and everything. And, you know, you've got, you know, your leather seats and your options and stuff. And, yeah, it's pretty neat. This one did 186,000 kilometers before it ended up in here. Which is not that much, to be honest. But, again, it's a Land Rover. These were prone to, like, electrical issues and stuff like that. So, yeah. Need, need disco parts. Here they are. I remember seeing a post about this. So, this is a Saab 900 from 1985. Now, these were actually a pretty good vehicle back in their day. They would go for just about ever. And Saab was made with such high standards. Uh, this vehicle, like, as an example, because when GM started to really meddle with, um, Saab, because Saab was actually losing money hand over fist, but the car division was not their profitable division, the aircraft division was their profitable, um, one, but these cars, they were very good with, like, racing and stuff like that, they're very light, and honestly, just a very cool car. And it's just, it's kind of sad to see it in here, but at least people are grabbing parts they need off of it. So if there's any solace in seeing any of these vehicles like that, that's what it is. So yeah, pretty cool. Somebody took the valve cover off, but very neat. I like it. And then right over here, I believe this is a five or maybe a seven series. I think it's a seven series uh, BMW. Now the drivetrain's already been stolen out of it. Um, let's see. Is it a five? It is a seven. Okay, that's what I thought. So it's a 92. There's the cats. Uh, kind of surprised that they let those. I mean, are they hollowed out? Oh, yeah, they're hollowed out. That's why they're in here. Okay, I was like, uh, because they typically just cut out the cats and have them for themselves when they come into the junkyard. So now this was their, not the flagship, but this was just below the flagship 8 series back then. Um, but. The eight, the 8 series, like the 850s and 8, 820s, I think they were, they were two doors only, and they actually looked pretty cool. Very similar looking to a uh, third gen Supra. But this, so a car like this actually was used in the original Transporter with Jason Statham. It's pretty neat. I don't really know much about these, but I know they're really, really cool. I know something that would go nuts for this thing though too. Um, friend of mine, Derek, he just, he loves his German cars. So he just bought an Audi A4 for himself and yeah, pretty neat though. When's the last time you saw um, their first attempt, like Nissan's first attempt at a minivan? I think that's what this is. So this is a Nissan Access, uh, it's a 95 and oh, the door doesn't open. This door does. This is like back in Nissan's heyday though when they actually made good vehicles typically. Oh God, these seats are, actually in good shape not a single tear huh well somebody needed uh some seats you got them here it's pretty neat it's got the little 2.4 ah so this is a i'm pretty sure this would be a ka24 just the front wheel drive variant of it um the same engine that we had in the nissan 240sx now it's probably like lower compression and stuff like that i'm assuming but because the ka24 made somewhere around like 180 horsepower i think but there's no way in hell this is making something like that um i'm assuming that this is of that series of engine though but just way detuned for this being a little minivan how many miles did this do 225,000 kilometers that's all it did <laughs>
Unbelievable. Just cars with this low of mileage and just seeing them in here. Like, I mean, granted, this is just a typical beater car that's not worth anything. So if it had any issues, it was probably just like bought for like $500, driven for like a year, started to have more issues, tossed it to the junkyard. It's usually what happens with cars like this. Now, this is the other one because I know that they brought in two. I just wasn't sure where they put the other one. But this is the turbo model. And, well, the turbo's gone. You know, it would have been right there, but yeah, this is cool. This one actually has the valve cover. It's kind of weird because these are a four banger, but they're like they're a slant motor. Um, because this is at like damn near a 45 degree angle. And like I said, these had a very good reputation for being like very reliable and honestly very good with like rally racing and stuff like that too because they were very well balanced. It's rear wheel drive and it's just an absolute riot. Now this one's been stripped of everything and floor cut out of it. You know, this one had 230k on it before it ended up in here. God, these cars are just so cool. And it's got sunroof on it too. <laughs> Sad. Or it might be moonroof, but either or. This one's an 85. So, yeah, sad to see it in here, but... Eh. You know, and somebody stole the, uh, the little sickle spoiler that these had. But, pretty cool. Right beside it, we have this Volkswagen Golf here. Um, which, now this is a 86. Oh, and it's actually got a winter tire back here. It's actually in pretty good shape. What size? Oh, actually, eh, it's starting to get a little dry rot on the sidewall. Never mind. I was about to just take that. But, nope. Uh, this one's actually got, it's weird. The driver's seat's actually in pretty good shape. The passenger seat is the one that's been slashed up. So it's kind of odd. Um, you know, and you can see the little, it's probably like a 1.2, maybe a 1.4 or something like that. I, I don't know these that well, but this is the second generation uh, Golf, I believe. And the, these were obviously very, very popular and they're still kind of popular to this day. People go nuts for these things. I mean, I prefer a Mark 1 myself, but a Mark 2? Damn awesome. So, yeah, that's here too. There we go. Here we have a big old Merc. This is, ooh. Uh, what is this? Like a, I'm trying to think of the designation. Like this would be like a 560, I think. Something like that. It's an 81. What do the badges say on the back? Oh, the badges are gone, so I can't even tell. And look at the size of that trunk, man. Like, this was like the epitome of luxury. And, you know, they would... They were actually a pretty good vehicle, too, overall, from what I can recall, anyways. But this was like... They're pretty close to top of the line Mercedes back then. And even, like, these seats definitely look like Mercedes seats. They're pretty neat. They got these weird-looking headrests, which even, like, Ford actually stole this design for the headrests as well for their cars. It had 246K on it before it ended up in here. Pretty sad, but pretty cool, though. Eh, yeah, that's not really going to close very well. <laughs> but damn. And this thing's not in horrific shape, all things considered. Now, this was at an auction. You can see team auctions. There, so my guess is... Maybe the, the junkyard, like, Ipo Upo bought it from them. Hard to say. Because th they go through a lot of inventory here, so. Pretty cool. Quickly on note, this is a two-door Civic. <laughs> kind of rare to find. And this is like a 2002-ish, ish. Is it a Manuel? It was... I can't tell, actually. Eh, let's see if the pedal side is still in it. It's 2005, there you go. So, that's pretty close. Still has the temporary spare in it. And this was an SI, so this was likely a manual. You just wonder why it's in here, because it's actually in pretty good shape. And it was a manual, okay. Gauge cluster's out of it, so we don't know how many miles it had. But then again, I think these had a digital speedometer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this being an SI was the top of the line that we got here, because we didn't get the Type R in this generation. But very cool. And I'm sure somebody would go nuts for this engine. You know, just because, like, it isn't an SI, after all. Pretty cool. I like it. I think I just found one of the cars that I want to build one of these someday. So this, I believe, is a Mercedes 190. Uh, it's It's got this weird, 
little like plunger thing for the intake. It's kind of a, a weird design, but it's pretty cool. Like, and I've always wanted to build one of these and have it as the, uh, make like a replica of the old race cars with like the Evo 2. Oh, this is a 260. Okay. So it's not a 190, but it's similar. Anyways, I just decided it's a really small engine, but very cool. The paint is kind of, uh, interesting. It's not rock guard. It's something else. Uh, let's see. Now this one did 237,000 kilometers and the interior, I mean, a little bit of, a little bit there, but this doesn't have like the crazy headrests like the other one did, right? Cause this one's a little newer, but, and this one even has like an airbag as an example. So yeah, frick, this would have been a sweet ass car back in its day, but not no more. Very sad. You wonder why I got put it in here? Cause it's not in that bad of shape. Yeah. Now, and I literally said, hey, I'm not going to film any more German cars in here. I'm done. There's been too many German cars. But yeah, this is a wagon. <laughs> so I had to. Um, this is a 91 Mercedes 300 wagon. And what's really cool is that this is a seven passenger. So you got this little jump seat back here. And it faces backwards, which they don't really do that much anymore. Other than with like, actually still some modern Mercedes wagons do that. But... That was the thing that was very popular to do over here. Now this one actually did some mileage, 417,000 kilometers. So they definitely got the use out of it, but it's still like in pretty good shape overall. Not really rusty. I mean, a little bit up here, but like this front fender is kind of bad, but you wonder what clonked out on this thing or did they finally just say, you know what, enough is enough. Let's just put it out to pasture instead of the junkyard. Yeah, kind of sad. But it's kind of cool with these Mercedes hoods, though, because they'll actually do this. Um, you can open it, and then there's a little clip on each side, I believe. And then you can open it to where it's, like, pretty much straight up and down like this. It's pretty neat. Makes it a lot easier to work on the engine. But it's pretty, pretty neat. I like it. And, you know, it's kind of sad whenever you see an Impreza of this generation. Like, this is a 99 in the junkyard. These are some of my favorites for the Impreza. Like, I mean, my absolute favorite is a bug eye, but... I know why this is probably here. It probably blew a head gasket, motor got seized up, burned a ton of oil, hard to say. But this actually has a, you know, an STI type hood on it, which would actually be worth it to somebody, I'm sure. Because this probably has the, uh... okay, yeah, it's a non-turbo, by the looks of it. Yeah, definitely non-turbo, but it's pretty cool. Kind of sad that's here, though. But it's understandable. Like I said, these were, especially if you start to beat on them, they really start to give you a lot of problems. So it's kind of sad considering in their heyday, these things dominated rally racing with the uh, Colin McRae. You know, for a second, I couldn't really tell what this is, but I definitely know now. So this is a uh, Acura Integra. Uh, this was, um, this is a 2001. So this was Honda's um, sort of mid-entry sports car because they had, you know, like the Civic, which could be considered a little bit of a sports car depending on engine options and stuff like that. Then it went to the mid-level, which is the Integra, even though underneath this is basically a Civic. And then up top you had the NSX. Pretty cool. Uh, I really do like Integras. They're very, very good vehicles overall. This one's definitely been exposed to the elements for a while, but who knows how long the head's been pulled. And you can see the head gasket here, and it's actually not, it didn't blow a head gasket, so there's that. But, and I'm surprised it didn't destroy the head gasket it coming out. So yeah, pretty neat. Sad to see it in here though, because these were a really awesome car back in the day. Well, it seems like not much of this has changed since the last time I was here. Uh, you know, because we have like this Knight Chrysler, I think it was a Newport, something like that. Uh, or sorry, that's a Chevrolet, no, Chrysler Newport, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, it's pretty cool. You have this old, uh, AMC Rambler. Pretty cool. And actually, I don't even think it's an AMC, it's just straight up Rambler. You know, and it's still here. With still most of its interior, and this thing hasn't really been pillaged yet. Which is amazing, it's been sitting here for months, and like, nobody's touched it. But, how many people need parts for... A Rambler that live around here, right? Especially this year, which is like a 58 or so with the fins and everything. 
It's pretty neat though. I like it. And I would definitely like this. This is a car that you know would be kind of neat to get back on the road, but ah, a windshield for it would be a nightmare to try and find. And you know some of the other bits you need. But it's pretty cool. I like it. You know, you got another one of these. Actually, is this one another Rambler or is this a Studebaker? Because I think this is a Lark, right? Yeah. There you go. Well, it's a Studebaker Crew, but I think it's a Lark. I could be wrong. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. It's a Lark two, Lark 6. That's what it says. Uh, I don't know the Larks that well. This is a 64. So this is would be one of the final years for the Lark, though. Because Studebaker, not long after this was only making one car and that was the avanti but then they ended up going out of business and selling off to selling off the licenses to the avanti and then there was a ton of avantis made after that but none of them were you know proper studebakers right so yeah it's pretty awesome you know i gotta love the big old marquee which you know cool part is you you find one of these this is the cheapest way to get a 9-inch. Get one of these full-size Fords like that. And, uh... Yeah, this is an awesome car. But, like, these all had a 9-inch in them. This probably has a big block under the hood, I'm assuming. And it's a two-barrel. Uh, I'm not sure what motor that actually is. Because usually these had 460s in them. But I can't tell, like... I think that is a 460, actually. Maybe 390. But... Pretty neat, pretty neat overall. I like it. It's such a massive car. It's freaking sweet. It's pretty roached out though. That's the only unfortunate part, like the door, you know, the recorders here on both sides. But this was like the epitome of luxury back in the day. And how many miles did it do? So it shows 24,325. That's probably rolled over once or twice. And you can tell because like the two is at the front. Uh, uh, it's not perfectly lined up. So yeah, it's pretty cool though. I like it. Pretty neat. I don't remember seeing this one here. So I guess there has been a little bit of turnover in here. Not much, to be honest. Not much in all these classics. And you know, you still got the Packard here. You got this other Caprice here. You know, the uh, this is a Falcon Fairlane, if I remember correctly, or like a Ford Fairlane, right? Yep, 68. It's pretty neat. And oh, this one actually has some of the the uh the taillight panel cut out for it and the floors cut out on this one now too last time i was here this was a relatively complete car pretty cool pretty cool uh yeah sorry because i've seen a lot of these for like the past few times i've been here it's just one of these things it, it's hard to like add on to stuff that i've already seen here we go an extended cab long box dodge adventurer now is this a big block or small block oh it's big block so this would be probably a 440, It's my guess. It could possibly be a 383, but this one's early enough to where, haha, it, okay, that has a two barrel on it, not the four barrel. So, because if it was a four barrel, depending on what year this one is, it's just kind of hard to tell. Um, this, they say 75. So if this was a four barrel, it'd be the really bad four barrel, which is the, Thermo quad, aka the thermo bog, the only carburetor that punishes you for going full throttle. Uh, these trucks didn't really change a hell of a lot from 1974, basically, all the way up to 1993. Um, like, yes, the body style did change a little bit, but you can bolt. So, as an example, like, say this box could go onto a 93. This cab can go into a 93. This front end can go into a 93. It wouldn't fit all that well. But it'll bolt in. So it's pretty neat. And honestly, I love these trucks. I love the uh, spare tire placement too. That's pretty neat. And that's an old bias play. I think. That's an old tire. Woo -woo. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So here we have another Dodge pickup. This one's the single cab long box. Uh, this one being a D series would be the uh, the two wheel drive version, and it's pretty neat. Uh, I, like I said, I love these trucks. Yeah, this one's a D one hundred. So this is actually uh, the low one on the totem pole back then for the Dodge pickups. 
And this one's actually in pretty good shape, although it's got the bird bath hood. Basically, water gets stuck in here, and then it just builds up a bunch of stuff and kind of looks like a bird bath, you know? But it's pretty neat. And this one's bench seat, column shift automatic. This one's showing, well, 7,396, but that's definitely rolled over <laughs> once or twice. But this thing's actually in pretty good shape. Like a, there's a lot of usable bits on here. It's too bad the box is a little like that. But, and even like the tailgate, if somebody really was desperate for a tailgate, I mean, it's got a hole in it. But this could be workable, right? And like, you just never know what you're gonna find for your vehicle. You know, like the bed floor is actually in pretty good shape overall too. <laughs> You know, it's kind of sad to see this stuff in here, but at the same time, hopefully people can nab parts off of it before it goes to the scrapper. All right, here's a proper uh, couple of square bodies. In case in point, when I told you about those square body hoods, this one is bent right there too. So, and it's just, it's, it's a weak point because of how way overbuilt these are. Like it doesn't need to be near this tough. Uh, if you don't grease these fairly often, they will eventually do that to your head because they just get too stiff and it's really unfortunate. You know, I've bent more than one hood like that. And it's a 78 C10. You know, and the hood for the other one is right here. Um, this is a manual. It's probably a three-speed. It might be a four-speed, but it's probably three-speed. You know, and these were, you know, like people love these. And this one's a Big Ten edition, which I don't... I can't recall the Big Ten. I, I've heard of it. But it would have had, like, you know, as exactly those extra chrome pieces and stuff like that, a little extra trim, that sort of thing. But I don't know what Big Ten actually stood for. So if anybody wants to tell me down below, you know, that'd be kind of neat because, again, I don't know these trucks, like, incredibly well. And this one, ah, it's got a, uh, I think it's a small block. You know, somebody took the distributor and, oh, well, actually, no, the distributor's here. So why did they pull the distributor out? Huh, Interesting. Guess for the cap, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, for me, I just buy a new cap and rotor because it's not expensive. But I get it. Now this one, ah, it has a carburetor. So that is the um, four barrel, uh, what the hell did they call those? Rochester something. I can't remember the name, but uh, they ran that carburetor for actually a long time. So they're not a bad carburetor, honestly. They're just not like performance or anything like that, but they're fairly reliable from what I've heard. But again, like, do I know a square body's incredibly well? No, I sold one years ago. Um, and do I like these trucks? I do, but I've ridden in one of these and they ride like a brickboard going down the road. But so do the Dodges that I keep fawning over this here in the junkyard. They do too. So that's why I go for the Fords typically um, of this time period for the trucks. Because that twin I-beam suspension makes it very, very comfortable. So as an example, this extended cab, uh, long box, Ford, this is a bull nose. This is like 85 or so. Like these are the trucks I really like. You know, this one, sorry, 81. There you go. This is the early one of these. This is the second year of it. And it also has a driver's seat in it, which is a couple little minor tears. Not too bad. But the dash is all pillaged and the gates cluster and stuff like that. Glass is broken in this door. Uh, the box is pretty gone and you know, it's pretty sweet, but this being an F-250, this is the three quarter ton. Uh, now this is some sort of a transfer case for what I don't know. And it's actually, it's not seized up. So that can be useful for somebody, I'm sure. But, or at least, actually, is that a transfer case? Kind of looks like one, but usually there's like dual inlet outlet or inlets on one side. No, sorry, one inlet and then dual outlet, but this is just single in, single out, so I don't know. One of you guys could probably tell me what that is, because <laughs> it looks like a transfer case, but... Uh, this one having the rear sliding glass is pretty neat, but unfortunately, this one is pretty, pretty gone in here. Kind of sad, but it's pretty neat, though. I like it. Now, and then right in front of it, actually, is this old Ford here. This is earlier. This would be, like, early 70s, I think. Maybe even late 60s. So, so this is actually 76. There you go. Now, this has the four-speed manual in it. Um, this probably had a... It may have had a big block, but probably a small block. It could have had a 306 in it as well. It's hard to say. And the motor's not there, so I don't know. And I, don't, I don't know by looking at, like motor mounts and stuff like that if they're still there it, what motor would have been in this truck 
But actually, all I know, it is still here. What am I talking about? Ugh. God, I'm tired. Um, that is, I think it's a small block. Yeah, 302. 351, maybe. Pretty cool. And, like, I really do like these trucks. And, like, in their twin I-beam suspension, you can see down below here. Um, so, it's got this uh, big sort of cradle this way. And you can see the control arm going back like that. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And these things are just so much more comfortable than the Dodges and the Chevrolets of the time period. I like it. Here's another 70s Ford. This one actually has the hood with it. Uh, this one's a super cab, so extended cab, long box, you know? It's pretty neat. Well, whatever motor it had was long gone, but judging by the size of this thing, this is probably like a 460, I'm guessing, was under the hood of this. You know? It's pretty cool. You know, you can see some of the stuff there, and there's the VIN, if everybody feels like decoding that. Because it's not a 17 digit, it's old school. This is another 76. Like, I don't know why every single one of these they have is like a 76. Surprising that some of the stuff in this really back corner here is still here. But, yeah. Ooh, there's some good rust there. And like the big old, I think, is this a Sterling axle, I think? I, I can't remember. Or did they use the Sterling axles later? Um, the Sterling, was it like 10 a quarter or some shit like that? Like really beefy axle. But, yeah, and it definitely is an F250. That's what I thought, being a super cab. Pretty cool. It's, again, I keep saying this, but I like it. Now, see, something that I was looking for is this generation of the Ford pickup, which, like, the F-Series, which this is a mid-90s. Uh, like, they made these from, like, I think it was, like, 1990, no, 1989 or something like that to 2000. Let's say, what motor is in this one? Oh, this is a 306, just like my dad's truck. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what that is with a split manifold and everything. So this with a 306 in it, actually these are a very, very reliable engine because one thing that they don't have, they have, so they have a timing gear setup rather than timing chains. It's a very reliable setup overall. And it's just, it's great. Now this actually does have the windshield trim. It's actually in good shape. Can I pull it off by hand or am I gonna need to go back to my car and get some tools because I'll pull this for sure for my dad's truck. Even though that truck is a bit in limbo with some stuff. This thing's not in horrible shape actually. It's a 95 just like his. Unfortunately, the seats are long gone. This one's an automatic where my dad's a stick. But, and it's a two wheel drive just like my dad's. But pretty cool. So this is like an automatic version of my dad's truck. Although my dad's truck was green initially and then somebody painted it with a brush white, but yep. And this has the dual tanks in it as well. Just like my dad's. It's pretty neat. Well, that was a success. So I managed to find a, uh, a bolt that had a little hook on it to get the trim off. So I didn't get the bottom trim off, but to be honest, my dad's truck has that. So score. So yeah, I got that. Let's go. And another dilapidated, rusty, square body Chevy. But then, beside it, we have the 67 to 72. With the 250 in line 6 under the hood, at least. It's probably 250. I doubt it's a 232. Um, and this was actually sold originally at Edmonton Motors. So that's kind of neat. It's a local Edmonton truck. This is a 68. Well, it's funny that it says it's brown. It's, uh... Not brown. <laughs> uh, you know, bucket seats in it. It is a Manuel. Pretty cool. And like these trucks, like they're very coveted by people. You know, they love these trucks. But then actually, ooh, there's a couple other goodies for these old Chevrolets in behind me here. So let's go take a look at those. Cause yeah, these trucks really are some of the more popular trucks and when built right, they can command a lot of money. Now here we have a square body Suburban, which this is actually a Sierra and it's a, uh, uh, three quarter ton because it's a C20, right? And this one, actually, it's not a C20. This is a K20. So this will be a four wheel drive, which is pretty neat. Uh, you know, and this actually would have had a roll down back window like this, which is pretty sweet. And this is the, you know, not the original Suburban because technically the Suburban name goes all the way back to the 30s. And it was actually owned by Plymouth at the time, but then 
Chevrolet started using the name and yeah, pretty neat. But then there is one truck that is older than both of these, which is right here. So this is a about 65 or so Chevrolet pickup. And like, and people love these as well. They're a pretty neat truck. And you know, you don't see too, too many of these around like square bodies are the most popular but they were also made for the longest as well so that kind of ties into it as well um but yeah because they they made this generation from i think it was 63 to 65 or 60 maybe it was 61 to 65 um could i tell you the differences in years no so it's just 64 so there you go pretty pretty cool and it isn't 65 i meant 66 because 67 they did a new generation huh but yeah Pretty cool though. Kind of sad to see it in here, but yeah, it's kind of really hurting. So I'm trying to get over to Ford land, but GM keeps pulling me back in. You know, we have this really beat up either Impala or Caprice and whew, that thing's rough. It's like it went through a, uh, not quite a devil derby, but pretty close to it. But the one thing I spotted was this. This is a first gen Saturn SC. Now, the cams are gone, so I wouldn't be able to tell, but whether this is an SC1 or an SC2. Um, and the designation for SC1, single overhead cam, SC2, dual overhead cam. That's pretty much it. Now, people think that, oh, these are just straight up like a Chevrolet, you know, like Cavalier, and they're not. They share almost nothing with a Cavalier. This is when Saturn was still kind of like on their own. Like, yes, they were owned by GM, but they were able to do what they wanted. And this had 239,580 kilometers on it. Now, what's really neat is, well, you can see it here. The plastic paneling that is on quite a few pieces. So, of this, because the rear fenders, front fenders, the doors, um, and then, of course, the bumpers are all that sort of... Uh, polymer material so it made it very lightweight and these are kind of a sporty car now this one uh had an automatic in it so it's not as good but you know still really fun and these were like an amazing car they would go for basically ever you know as long as you maintain them and you kept up on like the uh, timing belt and water pump they were really 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 good so I would potentially own one. Actually, my dad owned a second gen of one of these. Pretty cool. But like the first gens have the uh, pop-up of lights, which is really neat. So here is one of the ultimate sleepers because everybody knows about a Pontiac GTP. And if they try and race you, they're typically beating you, at least on the street for like stock street cars at the time. This is the last generation of the Buick Riviera. Now, this was, you know, the pinnacle, the top of Buick. Um with all their stuff like with uh you know like all their models like the riviera was always on top now this has a 3.8 series 2 supercharged engine these produce i think it was about 240 ish horsepower but they did have a problem it wasn't the engine itself the engine itself is pretty bulletproof it's the transmission these transmissions were very weak and as an example you put a cold air intake on this you'll blow up the transmission and chances are the transmission is what's wrong with this one very common issue either that or the rear frame rails rusted out because i believe they had the same problem as the grand prix did with doing that but these are pretty neat and a lot of options in these you know they're they're always like pretty much fully loaded and you know you can see it's just very nice eh. i'm holding windshield trim so it's kind of difficult to do this there we go yeah like the deep red and the big doors because it's a two door, which is awesome. Yeah, you, know, you got your field door, your trunk release there. These very plush seats and oh man, even like look at the, look at the uh, the gauge. The gauge is how they are, right? It's it's not like any other GM at the time really, but yeah, this was like the top of the top, and it's actually not horrible. Like chances are, like I said, it's probably got a blown transmission in it, so that's why it's in here. But pretty neat. Now, here we go. Now, this I'm pretty sure was here last time. With This is a Mustang 2 with the 2.8 V6 under the hood. And, you know, it's pretty hurting, you know. Not much of it left, but they're pretty cool. These were, and this is the final year in 1978. These were um, based on the Ford Pinto. And people say, well, no, it's based on the Ford Maverick. 
yeah, which the Maverick had Pinto underpinnings as well. So it's not really a not really a flex that way. Some people try and say that. These Mustangs were hated a lot, and they're still probably the most hated Mustang besides the Mach-E to this day. However, I really like them, especially these coupes. It's pretty cool. Um, would I build one? Potentially. But like parts for these get very expensive. Like if you need any of the interior bits, good luck. They're gonna cost you a fortune. So, and like tail lights and stuff like that. Again, people ask a lot of money for some of this stuff, but it's pretty neat to see it in here though. So here we have a dilapidated, I'm not sure if this is a Galaxy convertible or it is Ford XL, okay. So this would have been the, the uh, XL Custom, probably. And you know, this is a pretty big car and these were like, I think the midsize, or this may have actually been full size, but just not to the trim level of the uh, Galaxy. This would have been underneath that, but it's pretty sweet. I really do like it. It's about like a 66, 67, somewhere in there. Maybe a 65, but I think 65 didn't have this much of a snout on it. I think this is a 60, like I said, 67. But yeah, pretty freaking cool. You know, the seats, like just look at the upholstery on those seats. That looks freaking sweet. Too bad that the seats are kind of tatty, but you know, cause that would be nice for somebody's collection. Cause it's a 65, but I mean, I could be wrong, but I thought those grills only were on uh, the 67s. But anyways, and then here we have another Mustang too, but this one, oh, this is such a shame. Now, somebody took the front end out of this one. You can see, because, oh, that's why. Uh, although that looks like something cut that, to be fair. Instead of like taking it out with bolts, they decided to cut it, which is sad. Because this thing is actually in really good shape beyond that. 76. Oh, this tempts me. I'm not going to do it. But man, does this tempt me to uh, see if I can pull this out of the yard. I just, I don't need a big project like this. I'm already neck deep in the middle of a tranny swap on my 82 Mustang. So, but I'd be all over it. Now check this out. This is a first gen two door Plymouth Neon. Now the Neon was uh, just a basic economy car for them. Now hang on a minute. Is this an actual ACR? But I thought the ACRs were only Dodges, not Plymouths. Huh. I wonder if that's real or not. Because it looks like the original coloring and stuff. Is this a legit ACR? Now, granted, the ACRs, like the SRT4 was still a much better car than the ACR was at this point, but, huh, man, because I kind of want a two-door Neon, you know, I think they're pretty neat, and if this is actually an ACR, this is the one to get, you know, you can see the transmission there and everything, oh, that's a shame that it's in here, very, 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 very shame, much shame. Now, if I remember correctly, yes, this is the one. So, this is a very much an oddity. So, this is a Plymouth Laser RS Turbo. This is basically the the Eclipse All Wheel Draw, like GSX, or the Eagle Talent TSI. It's only showing fifty eight thousand kilometers on this. What? Look, I remember. When he showed me this uh, like a couple months ago, because I do have access to other parts of the yard that people aren't allowed to be at. Um, and when he was showing me around for stuff, this car was over there. And I'm like, I told him this might be one to actually try and sell because people go nuts for these things. But this one, because the head is removed, it's a little more difficult of a sell. So I think that's why it's here. Two-door Cherokee is pretty freaking neat, but uh, I'm hoping to find, like I, I'm in, I, I wandered in a Chrysler land because I got distracted and then I kept going and going and going. There's some other stuff too, but people were picking parts off of it, so I'm gonna wait. But these are pretty neat and being a two-door actually, you know, I think, I'm not sure if this was here last time or not, but uh, they're pretty rare because they didn't make the two-door for like too, too long. Like granted, you can get it from like the, I think the, the early 70s up until like, the 80s or so because this one says it's an 83 um uh, but they're still really rare to find now because most of them 
were four doors. And these, this is probably a 304 V8 under the hood AMC engine, which the AMC 304 is actually the same block as a 290, uh, three, what is it? 345? No. The 390 and the 401 for sure. Oh, 360 as well. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to remember what the other engine designation was, but they're all the same block. So you can punch this out to a 401 if it happens to be, uh, like I said, a 304 or 390. Pretty cool. Here we go. Chrysler Cordoba. This is a uh, mid to late 70s. Uh, which, to be fair, that's when the Cordoba was made. Although they did have a second generation Cordoba that was made into the 80s. But, um, pretty sweet, you know? This was, like, the Malaise era. And does it have the rich Corinthian leather in it? Because that was the big advertising thing, which I think it does. Ah, oh, door panel's getting stuck. <laughs> oh, and there's a Batman logo on it. <laughs> Whatever, I can't open that door, so that's all good. This is a 79, so this is the final year of this big body style, because 1980, they, they downsized a bit. They really like Batman. A lot of Batman stuff on it. Um, I wonder if he's the one that owns that, or owned this. I knew a guy that had a Batman uh, Mustang here in Edmonton. This was an uh, auction. So, yeah, this was like the epitome of luxury, though, you know? Straight up. Uh, you could have only V8s, so whether it was a 318, a 360, or a 440, or even a 400 would have been the engine options, but I think that the uh, 440 was gone by this point in anything that wasn't a truck. This thing's actually in pretty good shape. It's kind of sad it's in here, but, eh, it is what it is. Well, I struck out on the uh, SN95 Mustang front. Um, they... There isn't any in here, which is kind of surprising. Usually there's like one or two, but I was only looking for one part for my buddy's car off of it. So, but anyways, thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. And yeah, this was a kind of a long one of these. I usually try and do these through about half an hour, but this one went for a little longer than that. So anyways, take care. Um, luckily, I got my little score at the very least. Not much, but hey, it's something, right? Anyways, take care, and I'll catch you next one. Peace out.